hey guys welcome back to my channel and i know i said i was going to do a follow-up of my previous fair video and that was a while ago so sorry it's taking this long in this video i wanted to discuss the things that i wish i knew before i started fair okay so a little bit about fair that i have had experience with is that you know you have the platform and then you have stockists who go on fair and obviously they want to have a search at some item that they can order wholesale for their shop and i think it's really good it's everything all in one place and to be honest i've tried to tap into creating wholesale orders for companies through instagram and because again like i said in my last video it's so saturated it's actually really hard to do that and plus it comes with a lot of the admin work as well so in terms of invoicing um if a company needs like a vat invoice and things like that then i think fair deals with all of, all of that so for me i think that's great in terms of paperwork emailing sending over invoices collecting payments postage costs things like that custom codes fair deals with all of that so for me it helps me massively just take away that admin side of it so i can focus on creating and getting the order shipped out so the first thing that i wish i knew or had or had prepared myself before i started fair is the amount of stock levels that i have in my inventory that i should have been prepared for so i think my very first order someone ordered like 20 candles um 20 oyster shells and like a few candlestick holders my minimum order quantity is 75 pounds like you have to spend at least 75 pounds on my website so there was a lot of multiple orders for this certain items that i had and when i had the 20 candles i was in such a panic mode because i only had one mold i had one mold for the candles one mold for the oyster shell plates and then like one mold for the candlestick holders so when someone's ordered 20 i'm there making one by one by one and if for example i have 20 candles to make it takes about one hour and a half for one candle to set for me particularly in this climate so it takes around you know 20 to 25 hours however you do not factor in sleep you do not factor in the candles that didn't make it you don't factor in you know time that you need to do your other things as well and sometimes you know i'm gonna tell you you think if you set an alarm for one hour each time you think oh i've poured this candle right i'm gonna set it for an hour after the time is up i'm gonna create another one that doesn't happen okay you're going to get back to your third candle and then you're going to be like all right i'm tired like I need a break and then it sits there for maybe like an hour or so but that one hour is crucial because now you're one hour away from getting that order shipped out so my advice is if you're making candle molds if you're making candles from molds and if you're making anything from molds get multiple molds because i was struggling so much my molds came from china they took like a month to come um it was just it was causing me so much stress and it took me ages to get the order out as well which is another thing you don't want to take too long to take an order out or to ship an order out because you know it's just it's not good for the customer to be waiting a very long time you can set your lead time on fair however i will advise to make sure that you leave enough lead time i think my lead time is about a week um i'm sure for many of you guys as well you work throughout the week um you have things to do so i usually leave about seven to ten days i think that's my lead time on getting an order out that really just factors in the time that i am at home when i'm not working or do my other stuff as well so make sure you leave enough lead time i know ideally it would be great if we could just work on our projects consistently and not have to worry about anything and get the order out in like one or two days that would be great but do factor in life it will take you a while to get your products shipped out as well make sure that you have enough supplies okay 
now you're going wholesale you can't be buying one or two kilograms of wax one or two kilograms of plaster or whatever you need to be buying five kgs 10 kgs 20 kgs of stuff obviously don't buy it if you're just starting out once you kind of see the kind of patterns that your customers are buying from you if someone's obviously buying a whole load of candles then you need a whole load of wax if someone's buying a whole load of candles and a little bit of stoneware just buy enough to cover for both because i don't know for you guys but i don't have the space at home to be able to have kilos of boxes just lying around the house so i try and just buy as i go along but i do buy in big bulks and that does result in just sitting around the house so you may trip over a box of 10 kilogram wax whilst you're rushing to the toilet i'm sorry i just don't have the space but make sure that you do have enough supplies because last thing you want to do you get a really big order in and then you have to search who has um this enough wax to order to your house you have to wait x amount of days for it to come and that takes away from your lead time in getting the order shipped out Another thing that you should be prepared for as well is packaging because I used to just send my items in like little boxes. Now it's wholesale orders. Now I need to be getting big boxes. And for me, measuring the kind of box that I need is really hard for me. So I had to buy a few sizes of boxes and minimum order quantity for boxes online is like five and sometimes that's like 20 pounds and... £20 may not sound a lot, but it is a lot when that's not the size you need. Like, it's a lot for a mistake. So make sure you measure out the kind of box sizes you need when you have your first order. I think it's okay to give yourself a little bit of kind of wiggle room and take a little bit longer with that one because you need to kind of see how big of a box that you need, um, what kind of packaging that you need as well. So... I think if you have your first order, then use that first order as a template for the rest of your other future orders. So make sure you can get a box that's big enough to hold your minimum order quantity and a little bit more and also a little bit less. So my boxes are now like this size and that can hold about 20 pieces. I do have another box as well if they decide to order more. But again, that's one of the many things that's just sitting around my house packaging costs as well you need to because it's now not going through like a domestic transit to someone's house it is a big bulky box and because it's a big and bulky you're gonna have a lot of items that are packed on top of each other so any little kind of turbulence it is more likely to break versus if you're just sending for example one candle that's wrapped really well versus 20 candles that might be clinking against each other when it's in the transport van i don't know i'm doing this um whilst it's in the transport van so you need to choose packaging that will really support your items and look at it this way because i have sent packages through ups some of them have turned out fine some of them they've turned out completely broken and i've had to replace them if you're going for like eco-friendly packaging then make sure you're getting like don't skimp out on the packing peanuts um get loads of paper root bunch it up make sure you're bulking out each empty space in the box like just prepare yourself for any eventuality I think one of my colleagues, she was like, if you had your package thrown from the first floor of a building, you have to make sure that it survives. So just package, just package it. Like don't skimp out on your packaging. I use bubble wrap um, because for me, it's very cost effective. I know it's not great, but you know, I have to use bubble wrap. Otherwise things will just be broken. So fair, they actually cover the postage cost, which is great because postage is so expensive these days. So for me to ship my items to um, America, it's about £30 now. However, because fair, I don't know, they have like a deal with UPS, they cover all of that for you. So all you need to do is just print the label from fair and they'll pay for the postage fees. So I think that's kind of everything that I've covered on things that I wish I was prepared for on fair. You know, sometimes I still have my moments where I've run out of boxes and i need to order things like that but that is you know 
choose a really reliable supplier make sure that they send things to your house really quickly so it does doesn't hinder your lead time so i know some of you guys have some concerns in my last video so i'm just gonna go through the comments um okay how safe is the payment on there i'm worried about such large quantities of being scammed charged back also if it's wholesale doesn't mean you can't put your own labeling or brand on it so i think they use the same um card like payment processor as shopify so it comes through as it's either shopify no 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 it's as etsy so it comes through as like world pay so usually what happens is you'll get your order and your payment will be sitting there and your payment will come to you as soon as you ship your item so not when the person has received received the parcel and to be honest i think because everything is tracked in terms of chargeback i i mean to be honest i don't really know that much about chargeback other than the customer saying they didn't receive it but you do have tracking on there so you can say that the client has received the item if they don't want the item or if they say that they're not happy with the item then they can ask for a refund back through fair or if some of the items that they received is damaged then they can they have to contact through fair as well they don't contact you directly and then fair will contact you to be like okay we need you to send out replacements um we'll pay for the postage again just according to whatever items that are broken then they'll take care of that side for you um but in terms of payment no one has a, no one has actually done any chargeback to me um so it's been okay so far touch wood if it's wholesale doesn't mean that you can't put your own labeling or brand on it so i actually ask my customers sometimes they might want to put their own label on it um sometimes they ask me to put my stickers on it like it really just depends and I think if they put their own label on it, then it is called white labeling. Um, but, you know, I always ask my customers. So you can if they want you to, but if they don't, then fair enough. If you do want to put your label and your brand on things, which I totally understand, then you can obviously discuss that with them. They have a chat system. It's very, it's very easy. If you're selling bulks on fair, is there a minimum or maximum amount you have to make? Like what happens if you get asked for hundreds and you don't have stock, for example? So you can set your minimum order quantity in terms of price. Um, and if you don't have enough or if you don't have the time to be making that much, you can amend the person's order. So it's not final. It's not like if someone was to place an order of a hundred pieces and you know that's to be honest for me that would be really overwhelming you can message them and be like hey um it will take me time to do a hundred pieces however at the moment i can only do 20 is that okay with you if they say yes then you can amend the order uh through fair and it's completely fine i think it's very rarely that you will get any problems through a customer um but that's just based on my experience and in terms of money you have to set your minimum order quantity anyway so you can set your minimum order quantity to like a hundred dollars like a person has to spend a hundred dollars at least so in terms of fees they do this thing where they take 25 percent commission um it is a lot however i think the first time it's 25 percent commission and then the next time this customer reorders i think it's only 15 percent commission um but again for me that's fine because being on fair it gives me exposure um so for example i had an order the other day for 17 items and it came up to 80 pounds and 31 pence and then fair took their 25 percent which is 20 pounds and 8p so my total payout was 57 pound 82 again that is just purely on the pricing of my products maybe i should go higher maybe it's too expensive but again you have total control over how much you want to charge for your products um again it is a bit of trial and error if you do get your first order and you're like this is i'm doing way too much work just for 60 pounds i need to put up my prices and also need to factor in everything else such as packaging and things like that then do it 
you are in total control of this so the commission is quite chunky but i think for me i think it's worth it especially if fair takes care of all the admin side and all i'm doing is just making the order and getting it shipped out also with the ups delivery um not only do they cover the postage fees for it you can actually get it picked up from your house and they will pay for that as well okay i think i've covered everything that you need to be prepared for for fair again if you have any other questions let me know and i'll try my best to answer them if you guys have any ideas of what kind of video you want me to do next let me know um i will be doing i think i'll be doing more like conversational videos so any issues that you want to talk about in terms of your candle making or selling and things like that then please let me know in the comments below and also if you guys didn't know already i actually have a one-to-one -one service where we sit down me and you for an hour and you just you ask me anything so whether it be creating content or if you're having trouble with your candles or your soaps or if you need help with suppliers um it's literally i just try my best to help you with any of your queries on a more personalized basis based on your business um you can find it on my website and you can book a call in with me and yeah i think that's the end of the video guys so anything else let me know and i'll see you guys in the next video